So can you tell us the top three things that you would recommend any new business owner does when they first start out to support the growth and sustainability of their business? Yeah, I love this. I think for me, the big... Hey guys, welcome to the Happy Way podcast, your go-to place for all things fun, happiness, well-being, growth, trust, and diversity. I am your host, Melissa Fideli, and I am here to inspire and connect everyone who chooses health and happiness so you can be your healthiest self and live life the happy way. Hey everyone, welcome back. I am super excited about today's episode. We have Yavanka Loria, who is the accidental entrepreneur, and she is taking the hairdressing industry by storm. You may know Yavanka from her high end extension line, which she launched in 2018 and has quickly become a signature global brand. After 25 years of hairdressing, the mum of two opened up her home salon in 2017 and started exploring. Exploring the concept of creating a high-end extension line. Yavanka's extensions are stocked in over 60 salons in Australia and over 400 salons in the US. Her growth is continuing month on month and is not showing any signs of slowing down. She is creating new benchmarks for the hairdressing industry and influencing women all around the world. Today, Yavanka is going to share her secrets of how you can do it all and how to leave a mark in the business world. So welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you for being here. There's so many amazing (laughs) questions that I want to ask you today, especially with business. But I want to just mention that I actually got your extensions three weeks ago now. Life changing. I know. Best so decision. like when you when yeah. when all this happened, I was like, oh, how perfect is it perfect. to share? And especially someone that's just had them oh, had them done for the first the time. Best decision I ever made. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about it for years, and I was like, oh no, I'm scared it'll damage my hair. But then after doing so much research into your product line, I was like, all right, these are amazing. I've got to give these a shot. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I want to start by learning more about why you call yourself the accidental entrepreneur. So how did that come about? Well. Honestly, like this all started as a little side hobby. I just knew what was lacking for me as a hair, as a hairstylist. Mm. And when I was, you know, trying to achieve all these amazing colours and tones for clients and I could never really achieve it. Clients were never really satis- satisfied. Yeah. So I knew the natural step was always extensions, yeah. but I honestly didn't know that I could pull this off. Like when I first started, the partner that I've got in America, mm. they were really my first set of inspiration where I looked at something and I was like, oh my God, I couldn't make this work. Also, when I, st- when I was working back in America, America when I was 23 yeah. I remembered hand tied hair there was a girl doing it in the salon yeah. but obviously you know at that point I wasn't ready for it yeah. and the way that they were doing it I was like on corn braids and they were sewing it in and I was like I can't corn braid that's one thing yeah. that I can't do I can do anything in hair but I couldn't corn braid so when I first started I was really naive going into it I think yeah. I just there was two aspects of of what I wanted to do Mm. and that was also I remember I was like I'm at that point where I wanted to work smarter not harder I had my two little kids and I was really you know subconsciously starting to realize that we were in it you know such an undervalued industry yeah and I knew instinctively that I wanted to specialise in something because that was where I was at. I knew mm. that I could do less clients, charge more, and then also be able to deliver something in yeah. a way that without extensions, the colour doesn't last. You could, mm. you know, be colouring forever and you just wouldn't get the results. And then not yeah. only that, the other flip, you know, the flip flip of the coin is that you've got to do more. Yeah. More, 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 and it was just the the reward reward wasn't there. Mm. So that's essentially how it happened. And then when I got my hands on the product, mm. and again going into this was so naive because when you start dealing as a supplier with a vendor, there's certain expectations like they don't put expectations on you in the beginning, mm. but down the track they're like, come on, little girl, you know, yeah. you want to play, you need to, yeah. you know, reach a certain benchmark and order minimum quantity order. Yeah. So then when I got the product, I knew that I had something really special, but I was like, all right, well, now I have to get out of my comfort zone. And it's, you know, all those little things that we speak mm. about being a mum, that mum guilt, you know, yeah. can I actually pull this off? Do I have time? And it's a little bit of fear. 
Of course. You know, I think that we all have the limiting beliefs, that little voice telling you, you know, who do you think you are? That imposter syndrome was really, you know, prevalent back in the beginning Mm. as well. But slowly, slowly, everything just kind of, you know, with steps that I'll go into, but it kind of fell into place. Amazing. I love that story because... You know, it's so, at the start of anything, it's always going to be so hard. You're always going to have that voice in the back of your head. You're always going to have that fear. But like you said, step by step, if you just keep at it and you believe in yourself, you never know what can come. A hundred percent. And I think also with this, you know, there were so many challenges in the beginning, but Mm. it was weird. It was like, you know, I would go to bed at night and be like, you know, that anxiety of like, who do you think you are? This isn't going to work. That, that, you know, that story that we tell ourselves. And then it was like I had... It was like a crackhead in the morning. Like yeah. I'd wake up and I'd be like, I'd figure out seven different ways of how I was how I was going to make this work. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I so it. in the mornings I was like fully charged and I was like, no, I just, you know, kept forging at it. Yeah. And I think, you know, within, you know, three months the more clients like yourself, mm. the response that I was getting from clients yeah. was just, you know, Honestly, like, it, what's that word? It was just so unassuming. Like, yeah. I, I didn't expect it because mm. before we never had that with clients. So we're always ready to be like, the colour's not holding, it's yeah. not happening. Yeah. But they were just honestly so grateful yeah. and it was life-changing. So getting that little bit of feedback from clients, I think that, yeah, that I was think a bit that of fuel. Were, yeah. I think that was a bit of fuel. Like, yeah. they were giving me more confidence and mm. not that I didn't have in myself as a skilled hairdresser. Yeah. It was, you know, the task of because I knew how much I was investing in this. Of course. And I knew that in the beginning I was like, oh, my God, like this is really blowing, you know, the budget out for people because who's going to pay two, 3000 for extensions? Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, back, you know, when I was younger, I remember my cousin and I, we were pay for it. Well, it wasn't even us paying. It was our parents paying, yeah. you know, for extensions back in the day and it was like 1500 Yeah. Do you know what? And then what happened is I think it got such a bad reputation because of the damage and then, Mm. you know, hairdressers were like, we're not doing this anymore. So what happened is non-qualified hairdressers were taking it on and they weren't qualified. Then they were getting, you know, the cheaper products and putting it in clients' hair. So it really dropped that ballpark figure. But look at the results. Yeah, You know, clients weren't, Mm. you know, they weren't getting a custom colour. They weren't even getting a custom blended Mm. and it made even hairdressers more turn their nose of towards course. it, you know, and then they were going to, you know, hairdressers going, can you install this? And hairdressers didn't know how to say no. Yeah. So I'd be like, sure, I'll just yeah. watch something on YouTube or yes. I'll just figure it out and put it in and there was real disaster mode. Mm. So that's, you know, the, the evolution of the education behind it yeah. was something that I caught on quickly. I was like, mm. if I'm going to make this work, I really have to set really strict guidelines and standards and if we're going to be able to pull this off. So that's really how that happened. Yeah. So you've obviously done incredibly well for yourself and the beauty of social media is that we get to see that exciting side of the business. But I remember when I first met met you, you made a comment about everyone seeing you now, everyone seeing your success now, but no one ever really saw those, you know, 5, 10, 15 years prior to this of all that hard work, all the no's, all the anxiety, all of that. 100%. Um, Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I think people really want to believe in the overnight success. They really want to be like, oh, sh- she started this mm-hmm. a year ago, now look at her. But, you know, what is your advice for someone looking for that overnight success? It and- doesn't exist. Yes. <laughs> it really, really doesn't. Yeah. And I think a, I spoke like I'm a Capricorn and yeah. I think I look back you know, when I was 12 years old, like I had mm. to beg my dad to work. I remember him saying, you don't need to work. You just need to go to school, yeah. you know, and I was like, please let me work, oh you know. Gosh, so yeah. I was I was begging to go and I think it's just part of my DNA yeah, um, and that's, hard. I think I see it in a lot of young girls that come and go, mm. like their work ethic is just not what it, yeah. what, and, and I don't even put my work ethic on my yeah. girls and my team. Yeah. You know, I have to be really careful because, you know, this is my dream. It's not yeah. everyone's dream. But I think anyone going into it, they have to really realise. I think it, if I make a comparison, mm. and I see it all the time as well with someone building a house, yeah. you know, and these young, you know, even when I was younger, we're already picking up pillows and, yeah. you know, all the pretty little things, but you really don't understand the foundational yeah. pieces that it takes. And then when you get into even doing, you know, getting in mm. bed with a building company, you're like, shit. Yeah, what do I do Things, here? you know, it's a yeah. challenge because yeah. all the little details 
mm. and the money behind it and the investing and you don't even think about it. And I think that's what happened also with myself, mm. but I had the education behind it and the skill set. Yeah. But what I didn't have is that 80% of mindset and psychology. Mm. And that's what I had to work on. And I think it was a combination of a little bit of, I think, right timing. I was yeah. ready for it. My kids were a little bit older. They were at school. Mm. So, and I had a supportive partner. Yeah. I think that's a that really big a thing. Big but yeah. it doesn't take away the fact that, you know, for the first two years, I was doing everything on my own. Mm. I was doing the marketing. I was doing the social media. Yeah. I was the one putting the kids, you know, to bed. Not that my husband wasn't. Yeah. But, you know, continuing on doing the admin learning I didn't know like I, you know I, I laugh now because seven years ago I didn't know what a hashtag was yeah you know when yeah. people were showing me photos on Instagram yeah, um, and what? I was like oh that's a pretty photo but what's all these knots and crosses yeah <laughs> at the bottom and they're like that's a hashtag yeah. do you know yeah. so I, like I say the world was my oyster because we had mm. you know access to YouTube and I really honestly I don't give my credit myself enough yeah. credit mm. but I really did I that was my source of you yeah, know, learning YouTube and doing whatever courses because the internet was, you know, a big thing at that point. Yeah. You know, and then I think, you know, within that year, like things just blew up in such a big way mm. and I was, uh, you know, consciously had to make a decision mm. to get out of my own way yeah. um, and get out of my comfort zone because yeah. I quickly realised this is a lot bigger than just me. Yeah. And, you know, I, it's funny now that I'm sitting here doing a podcast mm. and, you know, everyone's seeing me up doing all these media training, but people really don't know how I struggle and yeah. I still struggle with that yeah. because I'm genuinely, there's an introverted mm. side to me that I was really scared of putting myself out there yeah. but I think it's like anything the more that you do little bits and pieces and you know it just gets better and better with time mm. and I think also I, I was really lucky that my husband saw that yeah. this was you know a potential to work so mm. he came into the business and I think that really helped because he alleviated all those little things that you know I wasn't good at or not mm. that I wasn't good at that you know, when you're spinning so many plays, yeah, yeah. if you start overdoing and even yeah. now, like if I overdo too many things, you're not mm, productive. Of course. Do you know? Yeah. So I had to really branch out and figure out what everyone's zone of genius yeah. was and then also, you know, employing other people. Mm. That was also challenging and yeah. I feel like in only in the last three months I figured it out. Yeah. And I've got the right culture and I've got the mm. right team. But, you know, behind the scenes, it's always working and improving. But yeah. I think the biggest advice yeah. that really helps is I was constantly working on my own mindset. So take it day by day, have a process and don't stop working on yourself. Don't there's stop no such working. Thing as overnight success. There's no such yeah. thing. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing is be careful what you wish for. Yeah. Because then when you get it, you don't want to be ungrateful. And I, don't think building a young a younger team mm. or even a team in general doesn't, you know, some are a little bit older as well, mm. but no one wants to work for someone that's highly stressed, yeah, that's not course. in control, yeah. that's yeah. not grounded. That's why yeah. we say we're not perfect, but you have to create that environment where you can, can I swear? Yeah, of course. And you can fuck up and make yeah. mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? Because if you don't, I, I grew up in a time when, mm. you know, mistakes were very looked down upon. Management was... It just, yeah. you know, I spoke about it with my girl, like it was all very policies and procedures, yeah. but their morals and ethics and their culture was so shit, mm. you know, as whereas mm. with me, it's the opposite way. Like yeah. my policies and procedures and systems all come into play, but the, like what upsets me more is if my, you know, my girls don't get along or yeah. if my team's not getting along or, you know, if I don't have the right clientele, like that was mm. more upsetting to me. It's mm. about the energy. Yes. I feel like if you get that right yeah. and you're very clear, like now when someone comes on, I've created a really cool onboarding process mm. and it's very clear about expectations and yeah. what our mission is, what our values are. Mm. It all ties in because then there's no room for, yeah. you know, yep. for having the, like where your values don't align. I think of that's course. a big thing. That's a huge thing. It's a huge yeah. thing. So something I really want to get your advice on today is being a mum in business. Now, some may agree with me, some may not, but personally, I have always put this limiting belief on myself that I need to be successful now because when I have kids, it's just going to be too hard. Now, you are the perfect example of this because your business really took off when you had your children. So what are your thoughts on this and has this been a limitation for you or more so? strengths 
I think now that I look back, it's a massive strength because for yeah. years I kept asking other business owners and mums, you know, how do you do it? How mm-hmm. do you do it all? And I think now that I've done it, I think also biggest the biggest takeaway is, I was saying this to one of my girls the other day as well, like I remember working on a Sunday and saying to my daughter and my son, I'm, you know, I'm really so sorry, like mummy has to work today. Mm. And my daughter turned around and said, mum, stop, like you're helping people yeah. and you're doing this for our future. And just that little push, yeah. you know, gave me like that's the biggest gift that you can give your kids yeah. is them seeing because you can't you can you can't bullshit a child. No. They know, they yeah. feel it and they know that when you're doing something that you truly love. And if I can pass that on to them, again, I think it comes back to me just being passionate. Like yeah. I truly love what I do, so I don't even see it as work. Yeah. But I have yeah. had and to this day I still struggle with setting boundaries and knowing what my, I have like a bucket list. So yeah. each week I look or each month I have a bucket list. And as long as my buckets are being filled, yeah. you know, and every every week it, it changes. Of course. Some buckets don't get filled for that week. Mm. But at the end of the day, as long as I know that most of them are being filled, yeah. I think it, it makes it okay. And I, I just don't sweat the small, the small yeah. things anymore. It's important to instill those values into your children and I think you use that as fuel as well you know when you see that your children are really motivated and inspired by you that's that in itself is so motivating and then also like you said that's a great gift you know you're setting them up for their future and providing for them and I guess as a mother it's the only thing you can wish for I think in society um you know I know even growing up so many people place values like you meet someone Mm. and what's the first thing that asks you like what do you do do do? no one ever asks like are you happy are you fulfilled yeah do you know what I mean so that's the biggest thing I drum that into my team and just find something that you're fulfilled yeah you know and you can even see like with young girls like Mm. you know don't get caught up with not stereotype what am I trying to say don't get caught up in status yeah or what you think you know don't Mm. chase just the money yeah because for me that's one thing I was chasing yeah. my passion and then everything else came yeah. and knowing, getting really clear on who my target, like who my ideal client was, mm. who did I want to be around, who do I want to work and who do I want to mm. spend my time with and then everything else from there just yeah, falls into flows. place. Yeah. yeah. So go after your passion and put that Go first. after your passion because yeah. if you don't, mm. I feel like the other way when clients, when I didn't have control over my clientele, I didn't have control over their energy. Yeah. So then when I finish work, guess what? I didn't want to talk to anyone. Yeah. I didn't want to speak to my, you know, my husband, my kids, as well as now when I finish mm. work. You're so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. Like I feel like the biggest thing for me was I did this personal development um, thing and they were like, so what are your values? And I was like, good question. Mm. Like for so long you're living other people's values. Yeah. And I think also for me, what's your background? Italian. So yeah. like Serbian. Yeah. So yeah. culturally we're taught mm. and not even taught like the subliminal messages that I got mm. from my mom, she never worked, was take care of everyone but yourself. Yeah. Do you know? And that yeah. was a big mind mind fuck for me. Yeah. Because yeah. when I got into this, I was still putting my kids and my husband and everything above what I wanted to do yeah. or what, what you want to achieve. What I wanted to yeah. achieve because, you know, otherwise you're like selfish yeah. or that's how it really was in our culture. Yeah. So then when I went and learned this values thing, I was like, oh my God, like your family and people that Mm. truly love you, you want them to live their values, what's important to them. Because guess what? When they stop, you know, finishing Mm. doing what they're doing, then they've got enough to give to everyone. As whereas the other way, it's true, you're living Mm. everyone else's values, you know, not congruent to you. And by Mm. the time you finish, you're like resentful and you're not happy. And then I think that is what you know, causes so much trauma yeah. in people, in yourself, and then it ends up being a shit show. I really like that perspective of looking at it because a lot of mums, like, you know, even with my belief that I have, I think, oh, I've got to give everything to my future children and, and my family and whatever else. But you're so right. If you're not putting your values first and doing what you find to be, you know, beautiful and happy and, and things that bring you joy, then you can't then feed that to your you family. Can't feed it, 100%. You know, so it's put yourself first is basically what you're saying and, you know, do the things you love and that make you happy and then you'll be able to overspill that into everyone and around you. Can you can spill it and they pick up yeah. on it. They yeah. pick up on that because it's yeah. genuine. It's yeah. love, it's respect, it's yeah. you being in your moment and understanding yeah. your power. Yeah. And also yeah. it's a cultural thing because women I never 
mm-hmm. you know, looked at women in my circle or my family mm. and had anyone that was even remotely successful yeah. because they were always taking care of other people. Yeah. It was so far out of reach. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I think also when I started this journey, it's so weird because I had issues even with, you know, carrying this brand as my name mm. in the beginning because I didn't plan on it being a brand. Yeah. When people first came and they're like, oh, I love your brand. And I was like, brand? Yeah. Like I'm a brand. And I was like, oh, shit, I've just called oh this my, my God. name. You know? And then when we had a meeting and I was like, shit, this is going to go big and I know that now, yeah. do we change it? Mm. And then we had a meeting with my family and everyone and they're like, no, it kind of works. It and then, works. then I thought about it and I thought, you know what, how cool that my kids and my grandkids, yeah. you know, can have that because it is about family. Absolutely. You know, and they can carry that legacy on. Yeah. And my grandkids can now like you know, Google their grandma yeah. and be like, oh, my God, my grandma did she's that. She's cool. She's cool. Yeah, like, she's a cool grandma. You know, she's cool. She's not that. She's not yeah. that much of a stiff. Yeah, I <laughs> love know? it. I love so, it. So I want to get into more of the business side of things here because there's definitely a lot of things I want to pick your brain about. You know, I think we can all agree that every industry is saturated. You know, no matter what you do or what you start, it's either been done before or someone's doing it. And that can be at the start very overwhelming. overwhelming. So what I'm asking is what is a piece of advice you would give to someone who wants to start something but they're really feeling overwhelmed because, oh, this person's done it or they're doing something similar? Like how do you break through that? Okay, I think this ties back into knowing yeah. your values. Yes. I think the minute I, st- mm. I stopped looking left and right yeah. is what changed it for me. The okay. minute I started looking inwards and I got really down to what my core mm. values are and what was filling my creative cup, yeah. it all changed for me. Okay. And I think that is the biggest because then you get to know what's true to you mm. and the more you lean into that authentic, it's a game changer. Yeah. And I, then you stop feeling so overwhelmed because I think before we're playing to what this person is doing and for yeah. me I was, you know, like now I'm going mega against the grain of mm. what our industry is doing. And I cop shit for it in the beginning and I still cop shit yeah. because it's so foreign yeah. and it's shaking up things that mm. we're not used to. But I'm so invested mm. in seeing the change for my life and my yeah. family's life and my team's life. There's like nothing stopping me. Mm. And I think you really get comfortable yeah. with knowing that you're on that path when you, you know, finally like really listen to what, mm. you know, what you love doing. Yeah, I love that. So starting a business comes with so many ups and downs and lots of busy periods followed by a lot of really quiet periods. So as a business owner, how do you not freak out when you go through those quieter periods? I guess this question more so applies for someone who's maybe starting to gain a bit of traction within their early days of business. So how do you keep your cool and maintain a positive attitude as oh, a business owner? I love owner? this question. Yeah. So what happened, you know, like with COVID first yeah. two years, we Adelaide really didn't get affected, right? Mm. We were like, that's when we blitzed because yeah. we couldn't go in, we couldn't go out. And I I originally thought, oh, shit, like Mm. my business is going to go backwards because I didn't know what to expect. Of course. But the opposite happened within the first, you know, period of COVID because Mm. women were leaning more in towards self-care and whatnot. And then at the beginning of this year, what happened is when, you know, the border started opening up and COVID started entering, we went through a massive period where clients were dropping off, stockers were experiencing. So we ultimately had a downturn, Mm. but I wasn't even looking at that. Mm. And I was honestly like busy to me, busy breeds busy. So what I did, I ended up just, you know, it was so weird because it wasn't even me reaching out. I just got these young girls slid into my DMs and they were Mm. like, hey, would you like to collaborate? You know, and I'm normally very careful how I collaborate with influencers. I don't really give away my product for free. But I was like, hey, what about if we did this? You pay for the product and in Mm. exchange, because there's always has to be a fair exchange of value if you're going to give away something. So Mm. you're very clear Mm. on what, like, it's not, if you give away something with no exchange, then people don't value it. No. Right? So what I did, that's what I did. And it's stressful because now I've got a team of 10 or yeah. 12 that I needed to worry about. Yeah. But I was like, guys, we can either do this, we can either crumble <clears throat> or, you know, really get stressed out or let's use it to our advantage and start educating mm. yourself. Learn something new, learn a new colour, yeah. you know, get some models in and do some content, mm. you know, learn something. So yeah. that's essentially what happened. And I think my brain just 
you know, when it's quiet, I get excited yeah. because I'm like, oh, now I can learn something. Okay. So you know use what I mean? those quiet periods to develop your skills as a business Furthermore. owner, whether that's within your business, whether that's on yourself, no matter what, use that time because that time probably won't come around it won't come all around, the time. Uh, yeah. It won't come around. And even yeah. like, and that's what I did in the beginning. I was really strategic. Mm-hmm. You know, my husband and I, we were living, you know, paycheck to yeah. paycheck. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how much money you're earning, mm-hmm. right? You're still earning, but your expenses grow. Of course. So it's kind of like you're in that yeah. trap. doesn't matter yeah. what demographic you're in or yeah. what income sort of you're, mm. you're at. You're still in that same trap. Yeah. So even in the beginning, I was strategic. I, would, I was like rather be dropping, you know, the work that I don't want to do mm. and be doing the work that's getting essentially paying less in the beginning mm. to be able to build on that and get those clients. Yeah. And I still, to this day, I still use utilise that. Yeah. in quiet periods and I think that's really important don't stress out because I think you know I'm really into like low vibration high vibration yeah, yeah. and I think that's a trap if you get into the low vibration mm. you can spiral absolutely and it's easy to do that once it's you're there easy yeah. and then panic sets in and then yeah. you're not thinking no you know you're not thinking yeah. of the big picture Mm. You get caught in that in that trap. You can be really dangerous, and we've all yeah, been there. Absolutely, um, but yeah. I've really learnt to, you know, think outside the box and yep. think outside my thoughts. Yep. and that always gets, you know, gets us back on track. Amazing. So, my next question, I really want it to be a bit of a step by step kit for when someone who is starting a business can kind of come back to this and you know take it with them. So, can you tell us the top three things that you would recommend any new business owner does? When when they first start out to support the growth and sustainability of their business. Yeah, I love this. I think for me the biggest thing was organisation. Yep. Really being organised. I think mm. people, mums don't like hearing this, but they're like, how do you do everything? I'm yeah. like, you really want to know? So I'll wake mm. up at 4.35. Yeah, wow. I think that's really important is having, you know, waking up with that right intention yeah. for the day and setting yourself up, knowing mm. what your goals are, but not being so like, you know, to-do list, Yeah, having an idea, but you can't stick with it because everything changes so quickly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So being a little bit open, um, but being organised, you've got to mm. be organised at the same time and having that quiet time Mm. before whether you're working with people or whether you're working with clients being intentional to set your intentions for that day and for that week yeah and then I think the second one is learning how to delegate Mm -hmm. I think this is really important because I experienced this as well and I think my team hopefully can attest to this I'm not Mm. a control freak which I think is really really important Mm. to someone that's building something because you've got to learn to let go and you've got to learn to let uh you know give you know your team or your staff the the space to have some import because at the end of the day I employ people for things that I can't do you know so that's delegate is a big thing learning mm. i have this thing like do delete or delegate yep and that's been a big one and i think the third one is automize okay um so you automize what you can yeah. and i think that was another big key thing because otherwise it's 24/7 yeah you know you're getting emails you're getting even to this day mm. i think people forget and because we don't really share, like I've yeah. got three separate businesses. I've got yeah. Wyo Salon, Wyo Extensions and Education, yeah. mm-hmm. and I kind of have to have my hands in all three. But messages are coming from mm-hmm. clients in the beginning. They're coming, and you'd probably experience yeah. this, yeah. where you feel like you have to mm-hmm. comment on everything and, mm-hmm. you know, be available to everyone. And I think setting clear boundaries yeah. and by automize, uh, is that how you say it? Automize? Yeah. Yeah. How do you say that word? Automize, yeah. You yeah, it. you know, your systems and processes so yeah. that if you're getting bombarded with questions and emails, you can refer them back, yeah. you know. Streamline that process. Streamline that process yeah. is really yeah. important. And now I've got people in place so that that way if I'm getting, you know, overloaded with like messages, mm. I have to delegate. Otherwise yeah. you get caught up in doing the little of details. Course. And I think that's what gets people stuck where yeah, they can't then route. grow and they yeah. don't know where their time is more valuable. Yeah. That's yeah. a big thing. So if you could go back to the very early days, like those first few months of starting your business, what's one thing you would do different? In order to grow, you've got to grow mm. a team. Yep. And I think the one thing that I would do very different is not just overcompensate for people and also when you're growing a team, be really clear. Like now I was more more so employing people like, ah, oh, I'm doing, can you help me? Mm. Can you do this for me? Like let's let's 
help me because then in exchange when you're building a team mm. you have to help them yeah. and I think it can really blur the lines yeah. between being really clear because it's a job description yeah. and you've got to be super clear on expectations mm. because at the end of the day if they're helping you it kind of blurs the line where it's not a job. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think I had to learn the hard lesson of really setting clear guidelines and expectations mm. and knowing that it's okay, like don't hold on to people yeah. or clients yeah. or whatever just because you're scared you think that no one you're not going to have time to train someone yeah. or that you're not going to have time to find the right person because believe me, mm. the biggest lesson that I've learned, if you're holding on to the wrong people, it always holds you back, yeah, right? Wow. And every time I would make that decision to let a client go or um, let, you know, a staff member go, like around the corner, mm. something more amazing happened. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest biggest thing that I, I wish I didn't do is hold on to things yeah, learn for a lot longer, like yeah. now, and disconnect from the emotion. Like yeah. don't get, don't take things personally. Mm. It's not personal. It's really hard because people, you know, this is your baby or they would say, this is my baby. And you know, it's really cool that they say that, but really it, it's a dangerous ground to walk mm. on because if it's not very, you know, clear, like if you don't set the boundaries really clear, yep. it can get a bit murky. And then, yeah, I think that's been a big, big eye opener yep. for me. Amazing. So to end this episode, it's been amazing. I feel like I've taken on so much from you, which is so good. What is one piece of motivational advice that you would give to someone who wants to follow their dream? I think just get out, get out of your own way. Take a bet on yourself. Just do it. Just do it. Just, you know, face the fear yeah. and just do it. Yeah. I love it. Well, that's it. We hold ourselves back. We tell ourselves we can't. But it's why true. not? Just try. Just what go you got to for lose? it. Exactly. Fear is just all created in our head. Yeah. Like there's nothing. Even, and I say, like, even if all this went away tomorrow, mm. I'd still be so content and happy. Of course. That I've even pushed, you know, myself out of my comfort zone. So much. Because you never fail. No. You just learn so much from yes, it. Yes, absolutely. Love that. So where can our listeners find more of you? What are your social media handles? So my social media handles is just my name, Yvonne Loria yeah. and Yvonne Loria Extensions. Mm -hmm. So if they just typed it in, it will just pop up. Beautiful. I'll pop them all in the show notes as well so Amazing. people can come and find you. Thank you so much for coming Thank on today. Thank you for having me. Amazing. We didn't even talk about your hair. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll no, share lots of good. photos about it anyway. No, <laughs> so that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. And I hope you have taken even just one piece of wisdom from this episode that you can apply to your life to help you grow and be a happier and healthier version of you. Please like, subscribe and make sure to share us on your socials. Sending lots of love to you all. Bye. Amazing. Oh, you're so good at it. Oh, God. That, okay? that was so good. Oh, you're so... Yeah, that was amazing. You're, you're